at Lidford, a uh, new area for me today. Um, found a Tavy Cleave, which looks absolutely spectacular. You can already see Widgery Cross, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, a brat tour, a little bit of history about that. And yeah, Tavy Cleave, really, really looking forward to it. But like I say, new area, so uh, let's get learning something new. That's really cool, there's a little plaque here. Loving memory of Captain Nigel Duncan Ratcliffe Hunter, MC, which is a military cross, and bar, Royal Engineers, who was killed in action at Beef Villas near Bapoon on March 25th, 1918, aged 23. Obviously, First World War. Um, he loved the moors of Devon, and on his last visit to Lidford, he wrote the following lines. Are we not like the moorland stream, springing none knows from where, tinkling, bubbling, flashing and gleam, back at the sun ere long, gloomy and dull under a cloud, then rushing onwards again, dashing at rocks with anger loud, roaring and foaming in vain, wandering thus for many a mile, twisting and turning away for a while, and a sudden it is over the fall, and the dark still pool is dead end of all. Is it? I thought as I turned away, and I turned again to the silent moor. Is it? I said, and my heart said nay, as I gazed at the cross on Widgery Tour. That's really cool. Little bench here. That really cool pool. It's a wild swimming, say, so not my thing. <laughs> um, bit too cold and don't like the water, but if you do like it, there, beautiful camping spot down around the corner. It's, uh, it's shaping up to be a good day so far. Good day. All right. Let's do some more exploring. So, here we are. Tires number two of the day. Um, that's it. So, I should explain really, and I point out this whole tires thing so tires if you don't know uh, it's tours and rocks of significance uh, which are uh, 890 across Dartmoor so it's everything from big tours to any rocks that have got any kind of significance or history um, I'm not gonna lie some of them are eh, somewhat disappointing it's almost like it's just find a rock give it a name it's now a tires um, but if it's on the list, we're going to do them. And this one is on the list. So we've done it. Yay, Veil Down Rocks. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest. You're probably wasting your time coming here. Unless you're doing the tires and then also you got it. You got it. But next, we are going up there to Bratsaw and Woodry Cross, which is really cool. So a couple disappointing ish ones at the start, but things are going to get better. And then uh, we're over to arms. Uh, links, great links, um, and then into uh, the climax of the day, which is Tavy Cleave. Um, a little bit of a treat today as well, I've borrowed my mate's drone, so hopefully get some good footage with that. Right, we're off. So this is Brattor and the camera angle was just amazing with that sun straight behind Widgery Cross. That sunburst line coming out of it, it was absolutely spectacular. Um, but I kind of messed up the audio, so hence the voiceover. But what I was explaining basically is Widgery Cross, it was erected on Braytor, um, now known as Brattor, by William Widgery to commemorate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1887. It's made from 10 quarters of granite blocks and is the tallest cross on Dartmoor. It's 12 foot 8 inches or 3.86 meters and it spans 4.4 inches or 1.32 meters. Uh, it's got an east-west alignment, um, which I'm not exactly sure why. I don't think it's anything to do with Mecca. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a pretty impressive and pretty cool cross.
so unfortunately another bit of my technology invalidness um, and managed to muck up the audio again but basically just took a few minutes out um, and sat up at Little Lynx Tour in it's an incredible place, absolutely incredible. Views out over the quiet, literally couldn't hear nothing but the wind. And yeah, just a really, really good day. So, just sat down at Topic Great Links Tour. Um, got the drone out. It is perfect, perfect drone weather. I mean, clear, you can see for miles. Stunning location. Couldn't ask for anything more to be perfect for really good drone footage. Being a technology invalid that I am, I forgot the lead that connects the headset to the controller. So, no drone, idiot. Okay, so there's great links where we just come from. We come across here, a bit boggy again, but you know, nothing horrendous. I had a lot worse. There's up to the north up there. Not exactly sure what those tours are. Towards High Willows Yes Tour area. And here, higher than a goat. There, lower than a goat. And next, we are off down over yonder to Bleak House and then Green Tour. Bleak House got a bit of information when we get there, so I'll, uh, I shall let you know. See the old chimney here, it's fallen down. That's really cool. All right, we get up to Green Tour, and I look back down and tell you a bit about this. Look at that. Still solid, still not rotten. That's pretty impressive. So, yeah, that's um, Bleak House just down there um, in the in the gully valley with uh, Rattlebrook. A little bit of information, apologies for reading, but I literally planned this walk last night, so I haven't had time to commit anything to memory. But Bleak House was built to house the site manager of the Rattlebrook Peatwax. As the name implies, this is a miserable place in bad weather. On a sunny day, it's delightful. It lies on the side of Amacombe Hill with the remains of the Peatwax and other older tin works nearby. The Rattlebrook Peatworks tried to make a go of things in the early 1900s, but finally packed up in 1930. It was an ambitious venture with serious money spent since the railway was constructed from Bridgestow Station all the way up the moor to the peat workings. But as the saying goes, scratch Dartmoor and it will break your back. The business failed. Yeah, a little bit of history for you. Right, off to Chat Tour next. Um, this is Green Tour, by the way. Um, and then on to Sharp Tour, which is the jewel of today. It's what we've been waiting for. Would have been better with a drone, but hey ho. I probably should mention um, this area what we're walking around today is all part of the Wheelsworthy range. Uh, There's three live firing ranges anyway on Dartmoor, Wheelsworthy, Oakhampton, and Murrayvale. Um, but I was reading up a little bit. The army, um, or the military rather, not just the army, have been training on Dartmoor for over 200 years. Um, and Dartmoor was used as training in preparation for uh, uh, Crimean War, uh, Zulu War. Um, troops were stationed here and sent off um, something to do with the Waterloo Battle as well. Second Afghan War um, was also here. So yeah, really, really, really rich military history. There are other uh, areas down south uh, around Gutter Tour and such like, that in dry training areas, so it's blanks only. I say these are live firing, so if you are here, you should check live firing times, which you can do on the, uh, the website. Um, and if you see red fa flags flying, red flag flying, easy for me to say, then obviously that's danger, they're live firing, so stay the hell away from there. There's also red and white marker posts, um, which we'll go past them in a bit, I'll show you. Um, they denote the edge of the firing range as well, so obviously stay uh, to the correct side of those. All right. Okay, so here are signs I was telling you about. Um, and I was lying, 
Oh, that's made me look stupid, isn't it? It's actually part of the Oakhampton range. We were worried a bit further down. That's uh, my bad. So, yeah, but danger, do not military area, debris that may explode and kill you, so pay attention to that. You can see the line of them, as you can make it out, going down through yonder. So yeah, take heed. Okay, just to redeem myself a little bit, um, just here is the post I just led to, Oak Hampton Range, which continues over that way. Here, Wheelsworthy Range. So yeah, I was a, I was a, a little bit out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let myself off for that one. So Oak Hampton and Wheelsworthy Range pretty much border each other. Uh, hence the slight confusion, my bad. All right, there's Chatsaw, uh, so we're gonna skip up to that, then down on the sharp. So you can see behind me there, there's a um, sharp tour. And I was a little bit disappointed. It's a lovely tour. That's a lovely, lovely tour, but not as epic as I was hoping. Figured out what's happened. I was so excited about getting to sharp tour today. I forgot that I've actually plotted in two sharp tours on this route. That sharp tour, Lidford, the one that I'm excited about is Sharp Tour TV Cleave, which we haven't got to yet. So panic over because with the whole forgetting the drum cable and then being disappointed at Sharp Tour, we're getting a, a little bit down. But we have still got proper Sharp Tour to go, so excited. We're nearly now, you see here, that is Doe Tour. Then we're over to Little Hair Tour, Hair Tour, and then down through uh, some TV Cleave Tours and the Sharp Tour. Yay! All right, happy days. You can see there's Brat Tour with Widry Cross, where we come from earlier as well. Um, that is Great Links, which we've obviously been to. So I think we're about halfway around, so we're about three hours in now. But yeah, there's a Sharp Tour Lidford, uh, Hair Tour, and Little Hair Tour. So we'll be going up there after Doe Tour, but. It's an incredible day. It's cooled down a little bit now, which is nice. There's a bit of a breeze, which again is nice. Um, they're just lovely. Just absolutely amazing out here. All right, so up on top of Little Hair Tour. Oh, the jet boy will go in, absolutely starving. Um, it's stupid going on, she'd end up feeling sick and hungry and lose energy, so. Uh, we stop, got all day breakfast, all in the bag, which I'm much looking forward to. Then we'll carry on uh, and we will complete the rest of the walk. I say we're probably, we're over halfway definitely, we're maybe nearing the two thirds mark, which, uh, which is cool. And hopefully to get back in time, there is, as all well planned routes should have, a pub at the end. of hair tour now and here is uh, one of those posts I was saying about earlier so they got a red flag stay clear but look at the view from up here I like, see most of where we've been we started way down behind there in the car park that's Brat tour of Widgery Cross it's Arms tour um, the one up behind that's Great Links this is Sharp tour here uh, we've also been to Doe Tour down there. We've just had lunch at, um, ugh, what's it called? Little Hair Tour. You can see four miles. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And now we're heading over here. Um, Tavy Cleave North East Tour Lower. Tavy Cleave North East Tour Higher. Tavy Cleave North Tour. Oh, easy to say, eh? Right, let's get cracking. So this is Tavy Cleave. There is Tavy Cleave North East Tour Lower. 
Tavy Cleave North East Tour higher. Tavy Cleave North Tour. Sharp Tour. That is such a cool looking tour. I am not disappointed at all. In fact, I'm extremely, extremely happy. So we're gonna go up that one now. Um, we've just been up these two. We're gonna go up that one. And then head on, only a few more left today. from the top of Garretor, I can see right up Tavy Cleave, over to the Tavy Cleave Tours, Hair Tour, Great Links in the background, and even Woodery Cross. And so while we're here, I just thought I'd show you, um, here's the Leet, um, I'll put the name up below because I've forgotten it, to be honest, and there is Willsworthy Ranges, over this part of the range, random house. I don't know whether it's military or abandoned, I can't tell from here, but we'll look into that because it looks pretty cool. Um, we were going to be going um, way out around to get another tires. There's about 5k, but uh, to be honest, it's going to be dark soon. I've got the kids tonight for the sake of one tar. Um, I'm actually going to go through this gate, take that path, and that will head back up. You can see in the distance, uh, Widgery Cross in the car park's just below that. So I think I'm gonna cut the corner, save myself at least one or two K, I would have thought. Wow, just stumbled on this out of pure chance. You see this old railway line? Literally, it's the only bit exposed I happened to cross there. So that was a little bit luck. I'm assuming that was the one that I mentioned earlier that would go way over there to Bleak House. That was a pretty jammy find, eh? So, back in the car. Um, six and a half hours later, 15 miles. In the end, that shortcut didn't pan out, um, so I ended up pretty much doing a route that I'd planned anyway. Um, so yeah, well, what a day. I'm beat, I'm proper beat, that was a lot of walking. But, fantastic walk, fantastic tour, fantastic scenery. Just amazing, I recommend it. Like, like, subscribe and all that stuff, and I will see you next weekend um, when me and Mandy are all on a weekend there. Cheers.